being here present with all of you in this moment means more to me than I think that most of you will ever know. I wake up every single day and I tell myself that I'm not an imposter and that I deserve to live the life that I have created. Because just a few years ago, my life was on a completely different path. I grew up, or I was born, into a low-class income family. My mother was a single parent of two little girls. She married the man that I called dad on my sixth birthday. From that point, throughout the rest of my childhood, domestic abuse, adultery, and prescription medication addiction were common occurrences. There was one working parent in my home making less than $15 an hour, and the other parent that was there supposed to be taking care of the four girls that were here was sick 90% of the time. That left me the oldest to step up and take charge. Oldest of four, the youngest, was severely disabled with cerebral palsy and passed six days before her sixth birthday. To say that I was an angry child, it's an understatement. I can date my first fight back to the first grade, and I can take it all the way through my senior year, landing me in front of a judge for the fourth time. And as a matter of fact, that last time I stood in front of that judge, he said, Lauren, if I see you back in here one more time, there's going to be some severe consequences. I graduated high school in May of 2003, with a 2.5 GPA, and I might even be stretching that just a little bit. Um, February of 2004, my life changed forever. She's out here somewhere. <laughs> I welcomed a little girl, and I'll never forget the moment that I told my parents that I was expecting. My father turned around with disgust on his face and said, wonderful, another mouth to feed. While as painful as that was, it's exactly what I needed to hear. Because it planted a seed. And while it may have taken some time to grow, it sprouted immediately. Because I vowed in that moment that I would never ask my family for any help when it came to raising my child. Gratefully, I'm proud to say that I was able to move out of my parents' apartment and into my own the month that she was born. And this began what I now call my life motto of one step at a time. But I didn't realize exactly what was happening in that moment. Um, it was just a few years ago that I had this profound encounter with a butterfly, a wasp, and a bumblebee. And it put me on a screen, and I was able to play back my past and see really just how far I've come. So, I'm going to share that story with you. A few years ago, my husband and I were screening in our back porch, and everything had been completed except for the back door. It was on back order by just a few days, but we all know that if a bug can find like the tiniest of holes, he's going to squeeze his way in there. So you can imagine the amount of bugs that have flown through an opening the size of a door. There were tons of bugs. But I didn't begin to pay attention until this butterfly flew through. He was this gigantic yellow butterfly, and he flew right through the center of the door effortlessly, and he landed on the screen in front of me. And I sat there, and I watched him, and as I watched him, I began to create these stories of adventures that he had just been on, and how he was simply just coming in to rest for a second before taking off on his next. I'm not really sure how long I stood out there with him, and I eventually went back inside. And the next day, I go back out, and I notice that my friend is still there. Only this time, he's not resting on that screen, he's scaling the screen. And so new stories begin to take place. Stories of being scared, of hungry, of being lost. And I started to think, well, isn't that weird, you know, that these bugs can find these tiny little entrances, but once inside, the exit disappears. How many times have we 
thrown ourselves into the smallest little problem. I mean, we can just pick them out. And once we get into that problem, we put these blinders on, and that becomes our whole world. It's all we can think about. It consumes us. So as I was seeing this, I began to see myself on the screen and taking myself into the past. So when my daughter was six months old, I received an off, a wonderful opportunity. I was offered a job to work for a small business out of a woman's home. I was doing clerical work, um, data entry, setting up files, pretty much whatever they needed me to do. It was a great stepping stone in learning more than um, what I had been doing in the past, so super grateful. She also taught me during that time about responsibility and about being held accountable. And through that, I was able to move my daughter and I out of that um, government-provided housing, and I bought our first little car. And somewhere in the mix of all of this, like, I got really, like, I was, I was so proud of myself. I was happy. Look at me. I'm doing something. And I lost sight of the vision. Or I lost sight of the dream. And I became comfortable with the vision in front of me. Okay? So my boss recognizes that she's become a little bit of a security blanket for me. She worked with and around me for three years before she finally had to make the tough decision to let me go. Devastated. My whole world's been swept out from under me. What am I going to do now? <clears throat> Looking back, man, that was the best decision someone ever could have made for me. I owe that woman a lot. Um, but I'm back on the screen. I see that butterfly, and I look at him, and I said, hey, you know what? She saved me. I didn't realize it. I'm fixing to save you. So I take a deep breath in, and I release it. I let it go, and I shake all that negative emotion of fear and lost and hungry out because I know that that butterfly, he's going to feel it, so he's not going to come to me. I stick my finger up, and I slowly begin to make my way over to the screen. Now, I don't go straight to him because I'm smarter than that. I go just a little bit below him where maybe he'll see that there's a tree, right? I'm still, I'm calm, I'm peaceful. And I sit here and I'm thinking, okay, you can trust me. What I'm going to do is you're going to land on my finger and then I'm going to take you to the door and I'm going to release you. So five, six, hey butterfly, I'm going to need you to land right here because I'm not very patient. Seven, no, we're still not going. Okay, so I'm going to scoot over to you. Maybe you're just not seeing me. I'm just going to move over this way. You know what the butterfly does? He flies across the screen. He doesn't trust me. So clearly, my only next option is for me to become a ninja. I mean, that's the, the most obvious thing that we can do. So I pull out the ninja moves, and I'm going to catch this butterfly, and I'm going to set him free. <clears throat> I'm not going to act that out for you, but I will let you know that that butterfly was shaking at the top of the screen now. I'm frustrated, slightly winded. I stomp my foot, and I throw my hands up in the air, and I was like, hey, like, do you not understand? I'm here to save you. You can trust me. I'm safe. I know I probably look like a super giant, but it's, it's okay. It's safe. Let's go. And then I start to see again. How many times has somebody tried to save me or help me, give me advice? But in that moment, it's too scary to move because I don't know what lays ahead of it. I don't know what is coming. And so I am scared still. Here I am, scared still, back on the screen. A couple of weeks after I was released from that job, I saw that the local credit union was expanding. So clearly they're going to put a position in there that is similar to what I had been doing in my last job, which was involved in real estate, so I'm not completely out and left wing here. And I put in my resume, my application, a couple of weeks go by, they call me, and they'd like to set up an interview. Only it's not for what I thought it was going to be. Catch this. They wanted me to come in and interview to be a lender. 
a traveling lender. Do you know that I failed algebra twice in high school? <laughs> okay, but yes, sure. I will. I will set this interview up. I'm going to come in. The day of the interview, I show up at my mother's in my pajamas two hours before. She takes that maternal voice, you know, the one where they use your full name, Lauren Ashley. What are you doing? I look down at the ground. I'm afraid to tell her. I'm a, I'm scared. I'm afraid of fear of rejection, of not being good enough, not being worthy. And I was like, Mom, what's the point? They're not going to hire someone like me. They're probably going to pull like my past records and see that I'm a lost cause. Like, it's it's no good. Thankfully, my mother refused to take no for an answer. She forced me to go home. I made it to the interview just on time. It's fuller alert. I got that job. I fell absolutely in love with lending.、Um, I was actually a lender for 12 years, three different financial institutions, and in any department that I could get my hands on, I soaked every bit of it up. It was. It was a love that I, I just really enjoyed, but I finally decided to step out and、um, become an entrepreneur. So here I am now. <sighs> All right. So now we're here. I'm telling the great release story. The butterfly was released, by the way. It wasn't by me. My husband saved the butterfly, but I'm going to pat myself on the back there because I got him in there.、Um, I'm telling the story of the great release, and I'm seeing the butterfly. He's right here in front of me, but down here to the corner, I see this speck, and it catches my attention. And so I begin to zoom into the vision of what is that? And the closer that I get, I see it's a wasp and a bumblebee, and I immediately feel this pain of shame and regret. But I don't know why yet. But it stays with me, kind of like a name that you can't remember. It drives you crazy because it's just sitting there, and you're not sure why. A little while later, I came across a story on the bumblebee, how he's endangered, and pollination is very important to the world. And I become curious: Well, what is? What's the purpose of the the wasp and the butterfly? Pretty sure subconsciously I knew it, but I did Google it. It is pollination, just in case anybody's curious. Um, but as I was looking at that, I thought, "Wait a second! I saved this butterfly, this beautiful butterfly, because of the symbolism that he stands for: friendship and joy and love and freedom." But I left that wasp and that bumblebee. I subconsciously looked over them from past experiences of pain and of fear, and then I realized what that pain was trying to show me. For the first time, I saw my parents as individuals on a screen. So you see, I don't have a great relationship with my parents. Now we're very close, but there's a lot of anger and resentment that I am working working through with them for the childhood that I had. I am angry because I didn't have a safe home. I didn't have a home that you wanted to go to, but by seeing my parents on the screen, I was able to step myself back and realize that they were doing the best that they could. They were tired and broken in a moment, not knowing how to step up and off the screen. They had their own raisings. They had their own traumas. So in seeing this, I'm now able. We lost my father a couple of years ago, but I'm now able to communicate in a more patient manner with my mother.、Um, when we're having challenges, I can step back and see it for what it is, and calm myself down. I'm not void of frustration or anger,、um, but in challenging situations with other people. With other parties, I can look at them and see that we're not making decisions 
to affect everybody, we are actually making decisions in our moment. It might be selfish on the outside, but in that moment, it's exactly where that person is or where I am. And so I've been able to empathize better, to grow, to communicate. And as I begin to finish this up, I would like to leave you with just a couple of questions. One, think of a time that you yourself have been on a screen. In the past or currently, I know that I can think of at least three screens that I'm on right now because we are all constantly evolving and changing and moving through things. Two, a time that you were scared to move forward, but once you actually made it onto the other side, you realize it wasn't as scary as it seemed back then because you learned to take one step at a time, keep moving forward. And three, this one might be a little hard. You're on the screen. Think of a challenging situation that involved somebody else and place them on that screen. See if you can see how their decisions, taking how it affected you and look at how it affected them and why they may have made that decision in that moment. And the last thing that I would like to leave you with is change. We are calling for a time of change. But that change, it starts here with us individually. By changing our thoughts, we begin to change our mind, and we begin to change our life. We begin to practice compassion and love and kindness all the way around, and the ripple effect that it will take, it's unstoppable if we can just start here. It starts right here inside. Thank you.